Hey there, Autism Fitness founder Eric Chesson leading the movement for movement and bringing you another edition of Autism Fitness Tuesday training in which I take a concept strategy practice that we use in Autism Fitness to engage and optimize fitness and adaptive PE programming. I almost got all of that out without a flub, but whatever for our autism and neurodivergent life skill athletes. And of course, if there's ever, there ever a topic, that was flub number two. If there's ever a topic that you'd like me to cover, leave it in the comments down below. And before I get started, please like and definitely subscribe so that you never ever miss another edition or any video that I put up here on the channel. So in this edition of Autism Fitness Tuesday Training, I am going to be discussing the three different ways that we can modify an exercise. But let's take a step back and discuss modification. So there are three levels, you'll notice the three thing here a little bit, but there are three levels to any exercise that we are incorporating for our athletes. And of course, this extends not only beyond the, uh, the neurodivergent population, but the neurotypical population as well. So the three different levels of an exercise are going to be standard. So that's when the exercise is performed in a technically sound motor controlled way with enough sets and repetitions sufficient to develop a training effect. I've done other videos about training effect. It's the most important aspect of, of exercise because when we have a training effect, that means the exercise is doing the thing that it needs to be doing. So we have our standard, that's when the exercise can be performed independently with appropriate motor control and range of motion. Then we have progression. This is where we add more sets or we add more repetitions or we add more resistance in the form of weight um, or in the form of more power, or more velocity, depending on that particular exercise. But when we're talking about strength-based exercises, mostly we're talking about adding repetitions or adding resistance, right? Sometimes it's making the exercise a little bit more challenging, but we still want to keep the exercise, the exercise. Now, before many of our athletes hit standard, and this is quite important for the autism and neurodivergent population, we have something called modification. This is when the athlete needs additional support to perform the movement correctly and have technically sound controlled movement so that the exercise, this tool that we are using, has the most effectiveness that it possibly can because just incorporating an exercise is not enough for the exercise to have that true benefit. We don't just throw out a bunch of exercises, say squat, push, pull, and say, okay, you're doing them, so now they're all right. That is counter to productivity or counterproductive to developing a training effect. So the modification, and we're gonna go through the three different ways that we can modify any exercise. The modification is something that we implement when the athlete cannot yet complete the, the movement independently with appropriate motor control and technique, which by the way, is a particular challenge that we find oftentimes with the autism and neurodivergent population, which is why this is so critical to know when you are running programs, because just saying, oh, do this exercise is not going to be enough for the athlete to be able to do it in a meaningful way. So when we get to the point of modification, it's either because the athlete is having difficulty motor imitating, because they don't have the appropriate amount of strength to complete a full repetition or multiple repetitions of that exercise, or because they don't have sufficient stability and motor control through the full range of motion. And oftentimes these things are occurring at the same time, so it's not as though we're always looking at mutually exclusive factors of challenge for that particular athlete with that particular exercise. Now on a side note, the reason that we don't refer to our athletes as high functioning and low functioning in addition to the fact that it's disrespectful to that athlete is the fact that there are some athletes who are highly capable and independent with one exercise 
However, they might need additional support or modification with other exercises. And this is fairly typical and commonplace with our autism life skill athletes. So let's talk about the three different areas of modification. We have first a mirror prompt. This is going to be the best possible scenario for us because it's going to allow us to stay within uh, a, a good distance from our athlete. And what we are doing is, is performing the exercise so that the athlete has a visual representation of what that exercise is supposed to look like. Whether they can motor imitate or not to an independent level is going to be something that we need to observe because then we might, me might need to take the next step in supporting the athlete. So motor imitation is when we demonstrate the exercise first. Now, how do we demonstrate it? Not super quickly, but we take our time to demonstrate the exercise so the athlete has the best possible chance of recording that, that movement and observing us performing the movement so they can then take their turn. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be perfect or anywhere even close to perfect, but it gives the athlete that chance to observe the coach or an instructor performing the exercise first. How often should we do this? As often as the athlete needs it. The second uh, modification that we can use is going to be light physical guidance. So it depends on the exercise and there are only two or three exercises with which we teach physical guidance because we don't want to be in the space of our athlete. We want to enable them to be as independently as possible. However, sometimes we also need to provide some guidance for them. And we can do physical guidance uh, a couple different ways. Depending on what the exercise is and where that challenge happens to be, either that challenge or that, uh, that lapse or deficit in, in motor skill or strength, we may either reduce the range of motion or we may physically guide the athlete through that range of motion. Two examples of the latter are the overhead press where we can lightly prompt the athlete from the elbows to do the overhead press. Again, we want to be fully respectful of the athlete and make sure that we have consent or implied consent to even just tap lightly that athlete's elbows um, and making certain they're comfortable with the situation. Same thing with a standing band row or standing cable row, for example, where we would lightly guide the athlete from the elbows or from the top of their hands at like knuckle level to guide them through that movement slowly and safely and with full range of motion. The other way we might do this is with a squat, for example, where we have to reduce range of motion because the athlete is either collapsing, not literally, but they, they are dropping down um, without any control when they are descending or going into the eccentric portion of that exercise, really important. I know it's technical, but these are the things that make good exercise, good exercise. Um, so we might use a box or a bench or some type of other platform for the athlete to utilize so that they can control the movement to the extent that they have right now. So those are some, some, some examples of how we might physically guide the athlete, either using um, a piece of equipment, that bench or the box or a band for the squat, or provide light physical guidance so that the athlete learns what the movement feels like so that eventually, as soon as possible, the athlete can complete that exercise independently. And the third example of a, an exercise modification is using a verbal cue. Now, typically we wanna keep our cue short and concise because we don't want to do the number one thing, I have videos on this, the number one mistake that coaches make, particularly when training the autism and neurodivergent population, is overcoaching and using way too much language, way more than is necessary, way more than is effective in order to convey some type of cue. So instead, we want to dial into exactly what we want to see more of with that particular athlete and avoid, again, there are videos on this, but avoid have to or don't do language. So instead of saying, oh, don't do that or don't do it that way, 
we want to absolutely eliminate that from our lexicon, eliminate that from our coaching, and just use language increasing and suggesting what we want to see um, along with using behavior-specific praise for when the athlete actually does it. An example is Curtis is doing an overhead press and we say, arms up, oh, great job extending those arms all the way overhead and using that as the cue for the athlete rather than using a lot of jargon, a lot of language, and again, overcoaching to the point of confusion and uh, an ineffective way of, of getting the athlete to perform that exercise and recognize for themselves what that exercise needs to look and, and feel like when they're performing it, right? So coming back to the, the grand idea and the grand plan here is that when an athlete cannot perform a particular exercise to standard, then we need to modify it. Modify a modification is a safe and effective way to perform a less challenging variation of that particular exercise. And the three ways that we modify an exercise are either, uh, either with that um, verbal prompt or verbal cue that we want to keep short and concise, uh, with a um, with a um, mirror prompt where we are performing the exercise for uh, for the athlete in front of them so that they have a visual uh, cue and visual representation of what that exercise is. Yes, it's a dog. And the third, of course, is going to be light physical guidance or uh, support in that range of motion that the athlete has so that they can perform the exercise to the best of their ability at any given time. Of course, with the overwhelming, overarching, I don't know if it's overwhelming, but the, the, uh, the, the overarching idea and plan to be eventually having the athlete perform that exercise independently on their own so that it can generalize to all manner of activities of daily living and life skills. So that is modification of exercises 101. I am autism fitness founder, Eric Chesson, leading the movement for movement. If this has been helpful for you, please leave a comment down below while the dogs chase something out the window. And if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future edition of Autism Fitness Tuesday training, definitely let me know. And thank you again for watching.